Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're talking 2D poofs or clouds inside of Cinema 4D and how you can do it with uh, just some good old fashioned MoGraph action and uh, applying the nice 2D look with a cell shader and using some sketch and tune. So it's a fairly easy setup. Uh, this shouldn't take too long. So here's my uh, dribble page and I've been kind of experimenting a little bit with how to get this uh, 2D kind of poof set up and make it very easy to do. Uh, and uh, you know, here's my uh, setup here uh, that I'll show you. All right, so this is what we're gonna actually have our poof look like. So it's fairly typical, you know, cartoon poof kind of cloud of smoke or something where you have the initial puff up and then it kind of disperses into little uh, spheres or little bits of tiny poofs, little tinier poofs. So that's basically it. And it's a fairly simple setup to get this kind of thing going. So what we have here in my scene is first I got a camera that's just a uh, projections parallel so it's just straight on you could also use uh, you know just front projection but I like to have parallel projection because then you can kind of move around as you want to uh, and then I have a infinite light with hard shadows that are kind of tracing the shadows on my spheres here and I also have a, a cell shader material applied to uh, the little spheres and then just uh, like a sketch and tune outline for the outline of the actual clouds. And I cover all this stuff in uh, previous tutorials that I'll link in, in this tutorial. So at the base of what a cloud is or a poof of smoke, it's just a bunch of spheres. Uh, and you can see that I just kind of arranged a bunch of spheres to kind of look like a cloud. And you can see that it's not exactly looking too hot, especially with the cell shading here. We have these odd... Uh, kind of protrusions and stuff and it doesn't look very smooth so what we're gonna do to kind of smooth everything out and smooth out all of our spheres is go and place everything in a metal ball object so you just simply drag all your spheres and place it under a metal ball and that looks exactly like cloud right no not really so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move the material the cell shader material you can see that we lost it so I'm just going to delete all the uh, cell shader materials and just apply one on the actual metal ball. And then what I'm going to do is go into my metal ball settings here and increase the hole value so we actually get more of our geometry back. And I'll just choose like 850. And you can see that it's fairly chunky. And that is because our editor subdivision is really high. So what we need to do is bring up or bring down the subdivisions and actually therefore bringing up the subdivisions that you actually see uh, and that kind of smooths everything out so we, now we have more of a smooth cloud kind of shape we're not done yet of course uh, we're gonna actually start prepping this to actually animate so what I want to do is I'm gonna have two sets of uh, basically ways to number one control and scale down the entire group like this entire cloud and then also be able to control all these individual uh, uh, spheres as well so what I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna go and create a fracture object and what I'm gonna do is place that fracture object under the metal ball and throw all of my spheres underneath that fracture object so what that's gonna allow for us to do is use uh, uh, effectors on this fracture object and affect these spheres individually and then what I'm gonna do is create yet another fracture and place that place my meta ball group underneath that fracture and that'll actually we can apply effectors that will affect the cloud as a whole so we have two levels of control of our animation and that is sphere level which is with this fracture object and then the whole entire cloud with this fracture so what I'll do is just rename this cloud and then this can just be spheres so just the individual spheres so now we can actually start applying some effectors and animating these guys so the first thing I'm going to do is we need to actually start our animation where we have the cloud totally scaled down to nothing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get my fracture object, my main fracture cloud object, since that's controlling everything. And I'm just going to go into the coordinates and I'm just going to go and 
go to frame four and then just set some scale keyframes and then go to frame zero and then just scale everything down to zero. So you can see that just by doing that, that is causing our kind of puff up animation of our main poof here. So just very simple. We're just using scale keyframes at that point. But the trickier part is when you want to actually scale down from here and actually have the cloud kind of dissipate. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to our sphere level fracture object. We're going to go to MoGraph effector and just grab a plane effector. And then we're going to go and uh, we'll adjust some of these uh, position values here because we want to control the position and we also want to control the scale. So we kind of want when a poof poofs, <laughs> it, it kind of uh, pops up and then kind of dissipates and the whole entire cloud goes upwards. So what we're going to do is we'll just bring our x value to say 50 and then our y to about 100 and then we'll just do a uniform scale and just scale everything down to negative one so it kind of disappears and right off the get-go we actually need to animate this happening and you can see that if I adjust the strength here you can see that our cloud is dissipating with this plane effector here. So now all we have to do is simply keyframe the strength. So at frame zero, I'll keyframe, I'll set a keyframe for the strength and then at frame 30, I'll bring the strength all the way up to 100 and hit another keyframe. And I'm gonna go in my timeline and we can adjust the motion curve here. Let me bring this down here. So let's actually go through our animation so it pops up and then dissipates. And it's kind of dissipating in the wrong direction right now, but we can fix that later. But we can adjust this curve a little bit here. So it kind of puffs and stays at that state longer and then really quickly turns and dissipates into the smaller one. So that's kind of just adjusting to whatever kind of feel you want for this uh, poof to dissipate here. So let me move that out of the way. So right now we have this you know kind of nice animation of everything's kind of scaling down but what i want to do on top of this is have this whole entire group scale down as well so what we're going to do is go into this main cloud fracture object and we're going to apply that same plane effector to that uh, fracture object that's controlling the uh, individual sphere group of spheres or the not individual group but group of spheres and what I'm going to do is then actually on your fracture object, you can control how much that plane effector will affect these uh, objects that are underneath it or this whole entire group. So what I'm going to do, instead of having it at 100%, you can see that kind of everything scales down to nothing and it looks kind of looks kind of unrealistic, doesn't look very natural. We're kind of scaling everything down into, as a group and it looks kind of awkward. Uh, that's not really how smoke dissipates. It more spreads out than anything. So what we can do to kind of temper this down is just by bringing the strength of this plane effector as it's affecting this fracture object down to about 50%. So we'll have this dissipation, but we're also having the entire group of objects kind of fade down uh, as well. So you can see the before and after, how we're just slightly scaling everything down uh, just a little bit using that same fracture object. So we see that we have our animation so far where it poofs up and dissipates and you can adjust how much you want the whole entire group of uh, little spheres to dissipate as well. We can also adjust uh, the position here so we can have it kind of dissipate even more. So you can really jack these values up. That's not looking too, too hot, but again, we have to, the more you crank up the plane value, you might need to bring down this value right here. So what we can do to kind of make this a little bit more organic looking, let me actually just bring these values down a little bit here. So what I wanna do is kind of make it so our little individual spheres kind of move around randomly as they dissipate and isn't so static of a move. So to do that, we're just gonna simply go to our sphere level 
uh, fracture object here that is going to control all of our spheres individually. And we're just going to add a effector, a random effector. And what I'm going to do is go to that sphere level fracture object. And I'm going to place the random effector before uh, the plane effector here. So we have some randomness first, and then it will move uh, with the plane effector. So what I'm going to do is go into my random effector here. And I'm going to bring up all of my values in the position here to about 150. And then I'm going to go and change this mo random mode from random to, tu to, uh, bleh, to turbulence. And I'm just going to bring the animation speed down and turn on index so we have different uh, rotation value, position values, uh, more random, randomly applied to these spheres. And you can see that with that, we're actually randomizing and as the clones are kind of moving through this turbulent field, it's pushing uh, these objects, these spheres around and kind of adding this organic kind of movement to it. But you can see that the it's a little bit too frenetic. So what we can do to kind of smooth everything out is just choosing a bigger uh, noise scale and that'll kind of smooth everything out. So if we go to say 225, you can see that that adds just a little subtle bit of randomness to our uh, dissipation of our spheres here. So I think that looks pretty good at say like 250. So now what we can do is since we have this random effector applied now, it's actually affecting everything from the get-go. So what we need to do is keyframe the strength of this random effector uh, because it starts off just like this and that looks not so poofy, not so cloudy. So what we need to do is go and set a keyframe. Let's go and bring the strength down to about uh, at frame 5, let's bring it down to 0%. And then at frame 30, let's just crank that back up to 100%. Go to our curves here and adjust the strength curves. Uh, to kind of have the similar kind of curve as our plane effector and just kind of bring this curve down so it's kind of like a nice smooth transition and then quickly gets to be uh, randomized here. So let's see what that looks like. So we have our random effector and you can see that it's just a very subtle difference of uh, how our clones, our individual uh, spheres are moving, but it's just enough to add that little bit of organicness. So you can see without, just very static, and with on, with the random effector on, it adds that nice little uh, extra movement that you can really tell that this is a, you know, a 2D puff of smoke. Uh, so what we can do is, again, we can go into our plane effector and kind of move uh, these values around and adjust uh, kind of how things are looking. So you can have it uh, really puff up really fast by adjusting it in the Y or uh, you know just give it a value of 150 and 150 in the in the X and Y. You can also do it in the Z but you really won't be able to tell because Z is coming towards the camera and since we have this parallel camera uh, you're really not going to get that sense of depth so that's kind of why I don't have any movement in the Z here. So again we can adjust uh, the curves here too because uh, so we can have it randomize a little bit sooner, but I actually like it where it kind of randomizes towards the very end here. And again, you can adjust the scale. So say that that noise is too frenetic still, you can just crank up that scale, smooths everything out. I think that's a little bit too big though. Uh, so I actually like how that is right there. We can also adjust uh, the Y values to see how much it dissipates in the Y. Uh, you can crank it up in the X as well, so we have a lot more dissipation going on. But I just like just a little subtle amount right there. And uh, that's basically how I created this uh, animated 2D poof uh, with just you know a few keyframes. Uh, the key being having two sets of fracture objects. You can really have a lot of control uh, over, number one, the entire group of these spheres and then also have a control over the the uh, individual spheres that create the cloud or the poof and be able to scale those down individually as well and since 
we're using the same plane effector, we can adjust these values in here and that'll affect everything uh, in our scene. So the cloud as a whole and the individual spheres that make up that cloud or that poof. So that's it. So it's a fairly easy setup, like I said, uh, just using MoGraph uh, and then the key being, you know, apply these, um, apply the cell shader effect to get this nice 2D shading uh, and adjusting your light in your scene so you get the correct shadows. And then what you can do is once you have a set of these, you can actually go and let me find this here. So what you can do is once you have one set of poofs, you can actually have uh, duplicate them and using the same plane effectors and just kind of move them around so you have these multiple groups and form an even bigger cloud. So you'll see here, I have one big cloud and then it kind of dissipates. Uh, and that is one way to get an even bigger cloud. And basically what I did was I just have this same setup, duplicate it, and then I'll go in, move this over, and then just move these individual spheres to create a different looking uh, little poof group here. My poof group. And so like, building it like that, you can get an even bigger uh, cloud or poof and everything is still intact because we animated with uh, effectors here. So that is uh, my method of creating little 2D cartoon cloud poofs uh, and all that good stuff. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer anything you might be stuck on. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll put in the tutorial, the, the link to the cell shading tutorial that I did, as well as the sketch and tune to add uh, strokes along uh, the clouds here. Actually, I don't even think there's any applied right now. Let me just throw them out real quick. Real quick. Uh, so there we go. We got this nice... Uh, little outline now uh, and that's sketch and tune I, I'll, I'll co I covered that in many of my previous tutorials so I'll add that in the tutorial notes uh, and that's it uh, as always thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial